Okay, let's uh, stop the presses here because this is not exactly the direction in which I wanted to go. Uh, let's instead uh, look at the animation sequence. All right, so we have an animation we can load of uh, this uh, sequence of images rather than just the one that we used as a brush. Uh, let's load the whole sequence. And so I have this on the D drive. Let's go right there, daily dose, and I think I have it on the verve. And there it is, number three. Yeah, so here are the TIFF images. Let's go uh, grab a few just to see if that's the right. Actually, that's not the latest. This one here, the short ones are the ones I want. So let's grab a few of those, see what they look like when I import those. And here they are. All right, so I'm going to go and um, load the whole sequence. All right, uh, where is it there? Load sequence. And it's from this first one here. I think there's 25 of them, there you go. 26 maybe and load that sequence like that there you go so there's 25 frames in this little sequence and uh, I might need to stabilize it I might need to make it loopable there's all sorts of other things that I might need but I might also need time <laughs> to do that so so what I'll do instead is assume that it's good enough and I just want to show how to composite that on top of something else so first of all let's go store that uh, something like this here to memory or to to disk it's still big enough that we probably don't want to waste any memory to that or at least not as much and uh, and now we have this one so I'm gonna close I'm gonna load this little animated sky and I want to have this one on top I want to composite that in such a way that this blue sky is transparent and actually will reveal this one behind it now I don't know if that's the right order to do it maybe it's the other way but let's see so I'm gonna make this one the swap image yeah, that's probably going to be just the reverse of what I should do. But let's just give that a try. If I click up here in the big uh, thumb preview, it will show a preview of the two together, right? And up here, though, it's not animating because this animation of the sky is longer than the animation of the first 25 frames on our clip, on our palm tree. So unfortunately, that palm tree clip, that animation needs to be longer if you want to be able to stretch it across the 88 frames. Well, let's make it so. Let's put this one in and uh, disable the, the combination here of the uh, swap buffer and simply make this longer. Well, how do we do that? It's 25 frames. Well, one thing you could do is time stretch it. That would be a way to do it, right? With either the uh, right click here and time stretch and say, I need this to be twice as big, uh, long or, or three times as long. Um, that might be okay in this. It's relatively noisy. It's not going to be uh, too detrimental if you uh, add the frame blending for the uh, time stretch. That's okay. Another technique might be filter animated uh, motion prediction module. That might look pretty nice too. Um, and then there's yet another one now in this case, which is to simply duplicate that entire sequence. So since it's only 25 long, we can make a block going from the first and mark it as the in, uh, and then go to the head, uh, at, put the head at the very last one, mark it as an out marker. So we now have a selection. The entire block is selected. You can copy that. You can grab the, um, the click the right button here on the timeline and um, go to copy the block. Uh, and then you could just go to, let's say, the first frame and insert in front of that. Right click here to insert in front. But that might actually do a little bit of a uh, sort of a jump uh, if the last frame is very different in position of the first frame because of my camera being handheld, the movement, the wind blowing, this tree, the swaying and so on. There's a good chance that the first frame is just not close to the last frame. And in fact, you can see it if you go to the last frame and then keep going by clicking the right button, it will go back to the next to the first frame and that's that's not in uh, 9.2 C by the way that'll be in the next release uh, we just did that in a recent build so <laughs> what you can see well maybe it is a 9.2 C anyway it's it's a uh, it's coming if you don't have it yet um, the 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 thing is that you can therefore see that uh, there is a little bit of a jump there as you but it I mean it, there's quite a bit of a jump also one frame to the next inside the clip but especially the last one to the first one it's not a good idea to to just duplicate that block uh, as is because it is quite likely going to um, to show that jump. And so what I would recommend is try instead to reverse this one first. 
right? so that what is currently the first frame will become the last and what is the last frame will become the first but not in the copied block that you also have already okay so I do a copy block then I do a reverse sequence here a reverse frames and when you are now at the very last and go to the very first there is that jump but if you go to the first and insert a copy that you you copied right you had the copy there if you paste uh, where is it there insert block before the current frame right now you got another sequence of the non-reversed frame sequence so the non-reversed frame sequence is here and then here it goes back to the other and you can tell that it's kind of doing a ping pong but it's okay I mean if it's moving fast you won't be able to tell but most importantly you also won't be able to tell that sudden jump that would have occurred otherwise so that's a nice little trick there if it is loopable like that or reversible uh, you can make it so that it's not actually showing that jump now this is not enough frames yet we need 88 to match what we have in the sky so we need to do this one more time and if you want to do it one more time without a jump then either we do that at the very end and hope that we insert well see there is it's going to be before this frame we need it after that frame so what i would do instead is to simply reverse this one more time reversing that entire sequence you now are able to once again go to the first one here and uh, insert the block you still have from the prior copy operation with 25 frames you can insert those 25 frames here and here too you won't see a sudden jump there still is a regular amount of jump again because of my camera being handheld but you should be able to to actually use this quite nicely um, and create now what do we have about 75 let's do it one more time let's right click here and reverse this one more time so the very last is where we can go and insert or well, the very first is where we can go and insert our initial set and uh, copy the insert block before current frame. So now we definitely have enough frames for this entire sequence. Uh, it used to be 24, 25 frames. Now we have over 100 something. In fact, we can, uh, oh no, we don't. It's 97. But it's still bigger than the 88 we have in the sky. Uh, so one thing we could do is make them match exactly. If we want, we can say, okay, let's actually bring it up to 100. Let's right click here and uh, do a time stretch so that we blend to 100 frames. Let's do with, with frame blending. There you go. So we have exactly 100 frames interpolated with frame blending and we'll store that. So animation store to disk. And once we have that, we also want to make sure the sky itself is in the same duration. So same number of frames. If we click that to restore the sky, you see it has 88 frames. No problem we can also make that last to 100 right click time stretch and uh, make it 100 with frame blending boom now we have 100 frames of animated skies and maybe we want it to not fly towards us like this maybe we want it to fly away from us so easy cheesy let's right click here and make it reverse frames so now it's flying away from us all right so this is the one we'll use let's go store that as well and that way we have a nice 100 frame animation on the background sky. Let's ditch this one, let's ditch this one. We have 100 frames here for the palm tree and 100 frames for the sky. Let's combine them together. So this one, we can actually, we don't need to load. We can make that directly uh, turn into the swap image. This is now the swap, uh, animated swap image, right? And if we scrub through that, right now we only see the main image, but if we click here on the layer mixing this will enable the palm tree to be showing because it is in the background in the swap image and it is a multiply combination though it's not a uh, a compositing with blue screen elimination or transparency we can do that but not this way so let's go actually do that the right thing which is to um, use this here the filter there's two ways you can do combine with swap or you can composite with swap the combine with swap you can actually mix and adjust how much you want from the tree or from the sky or both together in between but it's a sort of a semi-transparency blending not the best to use in this case so we have another option a uh, couple of options here but probably all of these will show somewhat semi-transparent what you really want is blue screen uh, screen sometimes might help also no 
not good enough. Uh, it's showing too transparent. So what we really need is to compose it with uh, blue as the identifier for the light blue on the sky here to become transparent. So what you'll do is you'll select the uh, composite with swap and um, there is the blue screen or you could do the uh, color key. Now is it compositing against blue that is in the main or in the swap image? I think it's in the main image. Let's go check that. Uh, yep because you can see the clouds where, which are white and therefore not blue are still showing their opacity, are still showing their opaque value. And so that's not the way to do it either. We need to reverse it. We need to have this one in the swap and this one in the main, right? So let's click that so that this becomes the main animation. There you go. And this one is a swap animation, right? And if we now do a composite with the two on blue, then we have much closer to what we want. Now we have the opaque palm tree and we have the blue parts of that palm tree animation. Uh, we have those become transparent and showing and revealing the animated sky behind it. So now this is okay. It's not always perfect though. The blue here is similar to what we're looking for to key on, so that works. But sometimes it's a little bit off and we need to adjust. So instead of just letting it go and try and hope for the best, you might want to go to composite not on blue and uh, you know be stuck with it but instead actually color key blue on any color uh, do a, a blue screen on a very specific blue namely this one here or up here they may be slightly different depending on sunset conditions you might get a little bit more reddish down here uh, or up there so you can you can adjust what part actually is transparent it's fun too if you if you want to make the edge of the tree become visible uh, go on the the, the green parts or the brown parts of the tree and you get different type of keying. But in this case we'll key on the blue and you can also adjust uh, a little bit the tolerance here to to keep it somewhat blue from the... Uh, no you don't want the blue from the palm tree, you really want that to be fully gone and then you can adjust even the, the, the low clip and the high clip there a little bit. Show the mat, that's always very educational to see actually the the, the blending that it's giving you. Uh, and then if you like it, then apply it, not just on this one image, but apply it on the entire animation, right? And so now this is actually interesting because it's showing you the mat here as it's going, but it's not just showing you to, uh, the mat, it's actually recording that. So this is not doing the final result of combining the two, it's just the final result of an animated selection mask that it has produced by the blue uh, keying against this background color. That is something that's a, that's gold too sometimes. Sometimes you want that asset as a single separate image, right? A selection mask or a something that you'll use for for uh, selections. Uh, you know, if you have hair in somebody's face, uh, this part here would be beautifully uh, selected that way. So that, that would be one way to do it. Um, there is There are other uses for that too though, and that's of course, let's go restore it here. No, wait, before we do that, let's store this, just in case we need to go back to that. Let's go store this animation. This is an interesting one. I think we might want to use that for something else in the future. So here's the selection mask essentially, visualized as a grayscale. And uh, we might need to invert it, um, but uh, because it's showing white is selected and we might need to invert it. In fact, you know what, let's do that right here. Image, invert, and um, apply to animation. Yes, of course, the entire animation needs to be inverted. And there you go. So now we have uh, this entire animation inverted. Let's go store that under animation store. And now we have a selection mask we can really be proud of. Now see the thing is, depends on what we want to do with that selection. Do we want the tree to be selected or do we want the background to be selected? Do we want the tree as an asset that's an animated brush for instance or as an asset that is a uh, an animation to be rendered on top of something else? And do we want to change color on the tree? Maybe it's uh, very very hot and dry and we need to give it a bit more of a reddish tint. Uh, but we don't want the reddish tint to appear on the background. So we need this tree here to be used as a selection mask, right? Use this animated as a selection. And so as you scrub through that, you can see that there is a, a marching ant there now that's also actually in effect. Um, let's go, in fact, let's go uh, place uh, this one here. Or 
right, let's go place this one. The other one, this one here is still... No, this one here. This is the one we want to have in the foreground. This is the one we want to have in as the animated swap. And this is the one here that's currently the selection mask, animated selection. All right, so put them all together. You have a selection mask. You can, you can tell here because of the marching ants. Kind of difficult to see. When you zoom out, it's a little bit easier to see. Uh, you can also uh, perhaps simply visualize it with the overlay. There it is. There's the, the purplish uh, tinting uh, for the alpha overlay. You don't need to show the marching ants necessarily. That too can help you uh, get an idea of where the selection lives. And it moves with it. It is animated from this part. This is the animated selection mask. This is the animated uh, RGB channel. And um, we have uh, this one here as the animated swap buffer in the background. All right, so this is how all, all things can be put together to, to work in different ways to composite, to do some compositing. Um, so, but let's say we wanted to now also, um, as we composite this sky with this palm tree, we want to, to create that and then later do some changes in brightness or color or saturation or, or make it more reddish, dry looking or sharpen it or blurry or whatnot. I mean, there's so many different things to do, but that we want to apply on just this part without affecting the background sky that's going to be blended in here. So let's do that. Let's go to uh, filter composite with swap on color blue, namely this one here. And this time without showing the mat, we actually see the colors of the tree. And uh, wait, why is it not showing the sky here? Let me see. I need to, perhaps I need to scrub through that so that it grabs it. Let's go check that. Yep. So now it's good. We can go and filter and composite with swap, color key selected and still not showing. I'm not sure why. Oh, I know why. It's because of the selection mask. <laughs> In order for that change to take effect, we want to make sure we also have a selection mask that lets it. But because we have this on here, the animated selection mask is going to prevent showing any change in color on the pixels outside of the tree. All right, so we need to deselect this and then uh, clear the selection mask in case there is one with the magic ants, uh, marching ants we would see. But now we can go to what we did all the way at the beginning, which is to composite or swap against this color. There you go. Now we can see the sky in the background. And let's go and... Uh, Yep, there's the mask. Let's go and animate that. So we have now created, we are creating now a compositing where the the tree is animated in front of a new sky. And once we have that, that's when we say, well, hold on, we need some other uh, things done to that scene. For instance, we want the tree to be a little bit crisper or perhaps a little bit blurry. Let's simulate uh, with bokeh blur that we, we blur the tree and our camera is focused on the background. All right, so first of all, we'll select this one to say, let's go blur it. Select this one as a selection mask. So that way only this one is being blurred when we enable the blur filter. Let's go to the blur, the, to the filter and say uh, blur, bokeh blur, for instance. And that's not for French as in beaucoup blur, but uh, you can see that you can, you can apply a lot of blur with that. And uh, we want that, for instance, to be sort of uh, blurry like this and animated. Okay, so we have a bokeh blur applied to the tree, but not applied to the background sky. Because the selection mask is preventing the effect of the filter from modifying the pixels outside of the selected white part of the tree here. All right, so that's how that works. You have a selection mask that goes in parallel to the animation. And once we have done that, we can reverse, you can invert the selection mask. We select this one, this one gets deselected. So we now have this one. That means we select the background. The tree is not going to be subject to changes. What changes are we applying that we want just in the background on the sky. Well, for one, we might want to make it even crisper. So we could go to filter, uh, sharpen, digital photo enhance, and make it even crisper. So that would be detail enhance, something like this, and apply that on the animation. So the sky is getting crisper. The blurry tree is not affected by it because the mask is preventing it.
filter does not get to touch the pixels that are black. The pixels that are white are open game. You know, that's that's fair game. We can go and uh, do stuff to it. We can paint on it. We can erase them. We can apply filters that render stuff into them or that in this case make it a little bit sharper and crisper. We could make it even look like it's moving even faster by adding some motion blur. So let's go do that with the filter for blur and add something like zoom blur or motion blur. Um, I want to try zoom blur because it kind of zooms to the vanishing point, right? So zoom blur, I'm going to put it down here somewhere and you can see the tree is actually grabbing a little bit. It's, it, is, it does actually affect the tree also to some extent. So maybe that is not a good idea because uh, even though the tree inside here is not modified, on the edge, the pixels are being carried along. Uh, let's see what else we could do instead. If we want to, let's see if the other blur is subject to the same condition. Um, zoom blur was the one, let's try motion blur. So yeah, same thing here. So the motion blur is going to, you can control the direction, but it's actually taking the tree pixels uh, and it's it's, uh, it's displacing them, the colors are coming across that. So that's not a very good way to use it. Let's try something else. Let's try something like color changes on the photographic filter side, like fog filter. Yeah, so that one we get a kind of a, a bluish tint or a, a cold, a cold, wintry, opas opaque tinting, something like that, and apply that, but the tree itself isn't getting any colder or bluer. It's only the background that's subject to the filter because of the mask that's going in parallel here. Let's see what else could we do. That was another filter. That was the uh, photographic filter for um, sunset. All right, so here's a sunset, kind of a reddish tint on the top, a bright yellow or Venus planet uh, toxic uh, green, something like that. Uh, and animate that and again the tree survives it and it doesn't have any it doesn't have any impact on the tree now one thing you do notice is that there are some uh, colors that are carried through or not affected and it's starting to show a bit of a contrast right so if you if you see this maybe it's time to adjust a little bit on the uh, selection mask to actually have some blurriness to that all right, so you, you, you could possibly add, you know, put that tree into the main animation and uh, blur it a little bit and then save it. And then you have a, a blurry selection so that you also get a bit of the color washing through the edges rather than showing crisp like that. But uh, that said, uh, that, that's, uh, you know, one thing you can do with this animation, you can composite it with others. And then in the next tutorial, we'll see, of course, what else we can do. And instead of using this animated tree, I'm going to start in a totally different direction.